Tom here from Warner Systems. We're going to talk about hard drive pass-through with XEPNG. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there is a Hire Us button at the top. If you'd like to support the channel out in other ways, there is affiliate links for products and services we talk about down below, including a full review of this Dell PowerEdge R720 XD server in our lab provided by Tech Supply Direct. We have a discount code to get you to some discount off your purchase from them. All right, I'll leave a link to this video as well if you're interested in more details about the server. But there are different ways that you may want to set up pass-through on XCPNG. XCPNG does support pass-through of the hard drive and it supports pass-through of the full controller that would be controlling all the hard drives. And when you pass through the whole controller, that means you would be passing them through to a specific VM and then that controller would not be available for other VMs and all the drives attached to that controller would then be only available to that particular virtual machine. Maybe that's what you want to do. That will probably be a different video. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to take individual hard drives off of a controller and pass them directly into the VM. Now, the use case for doing this is frequently probably free NAS. I think that's the most common question I get about this. But any time you want to test any type of system that requires or really recommends direct access, direct read-write access to the hard drive, not going through the hypervisor where you add overhead, add potential problems, latency, or compatibility issues, you want direct read-write at the hardware level. Well, you just pass that hardware through. There's a few reasons whether you're doing it directly to the hard drive or directly to the controller, you may or may not want to do this. One, from a virtualization standpoint, although it may work and it does give you the enhanced speed because you're removing one layer, but the other side is for failover would be an example. Even if you had two identical servers, that hard drive lives in only one of them. So whether that hard drive or controller that you've chose to pass through, once you've set that up and attached it, you can't just take that and drop it on another server because you'd have to physically move all the hard drives as well. Just a couple things to note. The final thing I will note is when you pass hard drives through, because XCPNG can see them but can't control them, this breaks snapshotting. And this is a problem other hypervisors suffer as well, where snapshotting may not be available because it tries to snapshot drives that it doesn't have control over because they're passed through. So just a couple prerequisites, a couple things to note when you're doing this, that those could uh, be problems. But for labs and testing purposes, this is definitely an easy, fun way to do this. Um, and it's not that hard. It is not exposed in the UI here, though. So I'm running Zen Orchestra here, version 5.5.3 along with XCPNG version 8. So up-to-date system as of right now, January 2020, 8.0 8 GPL. And we're going to go over here to storage. And there is no other than this removable local storage set up on here. We have this uh, dozer and this one are both running separately on a physically separate server running FreeNAS. That's how attached with an NFS share and an iSCSI share. And on here we have this host. Oh, sorry, uh, virtual machine, <laughs> Debian, and this is the Debian server we're going to be passing the drives through. It currently has just one disk and it's set up on that NFS share. And here we are logged into it and LSBLK shows the block devices attached and right here, this is it, one drive. But if we go here, lots of drives, not doing anything right now, but I don't want to give them all to that VM. We're just going to pick a couple of them to give to the VM. And Larger pass through is pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. Now, first thing to note is you can see that SDI has var log on it and other things on there. Definitely don't want to use that one because that's actually what XCPNG itself is running on. So you do have to make sure that you know that the disks that are on there are not in use. And we're going to do uh, SDA. So su so f disk slash dev SDA. You can see there's nothing but free space on there, which is great. We'll do STB. Free space. Cool. Well, there's a GPT partition from another demo I did, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete it because I don't want anything on the drive. Now, anything that's on the drive will pass through. So that is an option if you wanted to pass it through. Um, take an existing hard drive that had information on it and pass it through. This is another scenario where this would work perfectly fine. You just take it and pass it through once you know what the ID is. Now, first step in the process. we got to go here to CSRV. And there's nothing in here right now. It's blank. So we're going to make a directory. We're going to call it pass drives. Call it whatever you want. This is just easy for me. Uh, make dir pass drives. CD pass drives. Now we have to create 
a storage repository. You can create storage repositories in Sense Server here when you go to storage, but it does not have an option that would allow you to create, because it does local, but then it's the hypervisor controlling it. You're not actually passing a drive through. It's going to create it and create a, a place for you to deposit all those VDIs and virtual machines. Go back over here to storage. And we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to create a very special one. Let's copy and paste the command out. Uh, this will be located, the details of the commands will be linked to a forum post and the forum post will be linked back to this video. So if you don't want to try and write down the commands, you'll find them in the forum post linked below. So XE, SR create, so we want to create. We call the label as pass underscore drives, type udev, content type disk, device config, location, SRV, pass drives. So what this does, creates a storage repository with this UUID. It create, generates a new one each time. And now when we look over here, right there's pass drives, shows right up. So no problem, but there's no disk in it yet. So if we hit rescan, it's not gonna find anything because there's nothing to find. Now here comes the really easy part for linking each of the disks in here, ln-s. Now I'm in just, to point this out, uh, when you do a symbolic link, if you're in the same directory, you can just type it like this, ln-s slash dev sda, press enter. And what that did was created a symbolic link sda to dev slash sda. Now, if we go back over here, rescan, there's one hard drive. Now, it has no awareness of what's on that hard drive, so it says zero bytes free because, well, it doesn't understand it and it's not going to, but at least it can see it. So we have a methodology of knowing that the hard drive is in there. And we'll just up here again, we'll do B, C. Now we have three symbolic links in there. Just hit rescan. Hey, look, all the drives are there. Now, how do you attach them? Well, a couple things about attaching them. One, I probably should have named them first, but we'll go ahead and name them right now. You should make sure uh, for your sanity's sake that you give these names to know what they are related to where they are in the system. So let's say you know that you added SDA first and SDB and then this SCSI, uh, SCSI ID for SDC. And the reason I say this is if you ever have a hard drive go bad, you're not sure which one it is. Uh, if you at least know where they are and maybe make some labels and make reference to them, just pre-thoughts on theirs. I've had people trying to sort out things in post when they've had something fail. So now we have the three drives. We've named them. They have this name here. We could put the serial number in there if we wanted to get more specific. You could dive in however you want. But let's go over here to the VM. And even with this VM running, and it does have the Zen tools installed in it, we're going to go ahead and attach a disk. And go back over just to show you real quick here, here, and we only have this one drive attached. So, you know, if we the LSBLK, it lists out this one XVDA and then the partitions one, two, and five here and the volume groups. So we go ahead and attach disk, scroll down, and there's those ones, SDA pass drive. So this is the storage. It thinks there's nothing free because it can't see inside of it. All right, now the drive's attached. So, well, we go in here and list it real quick and just up arrow, we've gained another disk. So let's go ahead and attach the other ones just for good measure. STB. And scroll down and find STC here. All right, now all the drives are attached. It can see the size of the hard drive, but like I said, it can't see what's in them. So go here, now we have three drives. Now we can do whatever we want with these drives. We can CF disk slash uh, dev X B D B. And this is where things may get a little bit more confusing because this already had one virtualized disk pass through and then several real disk pass through it. They started at D, C, and E versus the way it was labeled over in X, C, P, and G. So once again, you start to see where these alignments can happen to where you may be confused which disk is which if you ever have one that has a problem. But from here, we could uh, format, do whatever we want to these disks. They show up with the free space in here. We can however you want to do it, create a new partition, uh, format them. They work like any other drive from here on out. Now, like I said, this works with whatever hypervisor, with the hypervisor, and then you nest in whatever you want. So let's say FreeNAS, for example, and you want to create ZFS, you would then, 
ideally, you would install FreeNAS itself, the install, instead of a USB like you would normally on a hardware device, install a small virtual hard drive, but then pass through all the hard drives that you want ZFS and to be part of the ZFS pool on with FreeNAS. And it would be that simple to do. In the case of this, if you wanted to build a RAID array within here, because this particular system running Linux, and I wanted to build a RAID array out of it, cool, I take those drives. Now I've done this and uh, like I said, really for lab, this isn't something as much for production due to the fact of the snapshotting problem. And well, it doesn't make it good for failover because it's tied to this machine now. But it, it definitely is a pretty straightforward way to do this if you want to attach drives directly to the system. And I will show you how to remove them. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll shut down this VM so you don't need it anymore. And then we'll go here. This shut off so it's just disconnected. We'll forget, forget, forget. Actually, we should just probably just remove this. I don't even need this whole VM anymore. That one's deleted. Then we're going to go over here to storages, fast drives, and we're going to say disconnect from all hosts. And then we're just going to forget it. It's gone. And then we go back over here to our system here, which it still exists here. And then I just RM star. Remove symbolic link. Yes. And I could have just done this, but you know, uh, good old RM dash RF and pass drives. Done. It's back to the way we started. So the storage processor is gone. So I've used this a lot of times for testing. That's why some of the drives were in there, like I said. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward to do. You just do this, you know, the XESR create. Like I said, I'll leave a link to the forum post to the command I use to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and I'll do a separate video because I know people have been asking me about this, about how to pass things through, such as the whole controller. I'll do that a separate video because I need to set up a separate machine for that because uh, I do use some of these drives for other reasons. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.